Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Obsession, which is a game of pride, intrigue, and prejudice in Victorian England. I'm going to be doing a two-player run through today so you can see what it's all about, because the game's on Kickstarter right now and you might be deciding whether you want to back it. Well, before we go on, I strongly recommend, as always, that you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so if I make any rules goose, you know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then, welcome to the English countryside. Fans of uh, Jane Austen or Downton Abbey? You are in luck. This game really brings that theme to life. Alrighty, so what is the situation? Well, great hardship has befallen the Fairchild family, the richest family in all of the county. Um, the, uh, the Lord and Lady were uh, died, I guess, in an overseas voyage, leaving poor young Charles and Lady Elizabeth homeless. And so they moved in with their two dowager aunts who live are in the richest estate in the whole county. Now, the other families have taken notice of this. In this game, I'm going to be the Cavendish family and Jen is going to be the York family. And we are going to try to build up our estates and put on lavish events so that we can draw the attention of the Fairchilds because if we can marry into that family, booyah, we are set. I don't think they said booyah back then, but you get the idea. So, over the course of 16 rounds, or if you play the extended game, I believe it's 20 rounds, you can flip this board over and have a, a longer game with more events and opportunities to build, to build up to really, really big things, or you can go for the quicker normal. Over 16 rounds, we are going to be using our servants to put on events and upgrade our manor and uh, impress all the different gentry of the land while trying to complete secret objectives. Now, as part of setup, everybody draws five and keeps two, and so I ended up going with the nature and guest bonuses. I basically, uh, um, by the end of the game, I will score 11 points if I've got the flower room and one garden, and I'm in luck because as part of the random draw of upgrades that are out, there's a flower room! Now, if I don't get this, there is another one in the big bag, but the other one might never come out. So, I really want to make sure I get that flower room. Although, right now, at 700 pounds, it's a little out of my price range because my family is broke. Um, but anyway, if I get that flower room and one garden, that's 11 points. That's a big deal. My other one is kind of unique. It doesn't give me any points, but instead, it allows me to avoid losing points if we are friends with American heiresses. Because nobody likes those American heiresses. They really bring your reputation down if you hang out with them, because they're kind of nouveau riche and all that. But, um, because I've got this, I don't mind, and I actively want to seek out American heiresses for their benefits. So anyway, those are my two in-game bonuses. Jen's got two of her own. We'll worry about that when we get to her turn. And I've also got a starting hand of cards. Now, I've got the four Cavendish, you know, uh, young lady Tara Cavendish, the uh, young lady, and the, uh, the, the young son, um, what's his name, the Honorable St uh, Stephen Cavendish, and then, of course, the Earl of Cavendish and Lady Cavendish. You always have your four base family members, and you also get two guests, uh, starter guests. And I've got Sarah Lewis and Esquire Reginald. And there's a little bit of backstory about each of them that kind of explains who they are and in some cases why their gameplay works the way it does. So I ended up getting these two random guests in our house. I've got these two bonuses. I've got my staff ready to go. And, um, right, the Cavendish family is the most reputable of the four families. Begin the game with a reputation of level one, position four. So I have more reputation. Jen is at 1.1. I'm at 1.4. So I'm a little bit more upstanding the, than those lowly Yorks over there, and we'll see how well that comes to pass. Right. Jen's got her own setup, including the fact that Jen starts with an extra 100 pounds right at the beginning. The game comes in increments of 100 pounds, by the way. And that's because, in the same way there are two different lengths, you can play standard or extended, you can also play open or closed courtship. Over the course of the game, we are going to get one, two, three, four opportunities to impress the young Fairchilds, either Charles or Elizabeth, depending on whichever one we want to chase after. They're both worth eight victory points at the end of the game if they fall in love with us or with our family or they want to you know, hang out with us. Um, so we're vying for their favor, definitely. Um, but, and to do that, at these courtship moments, we will basically 
Compare all the players to see who has done the best in certain metrics. Now, if you're playing closed courtship, we won't know what the metric is that we're going to be judged until we get here, until we get to that fourth round. Um, and then the eighth round and the twelfth round and the sixteenth round. We'll, there, there'll be a surprise. They'll be judged. We'll be judged by a different one. We'll be judged by a different one. We won't know until we get there. And then at the end of the game, we'll be judged on all of them. So, you know, there's like individual... Um, prestige battles, and then the big one at the end. Now, that's if you play closed. It you know creates a lot of uncertainty, and players really have to hedge their bets. They really kind of have to focus on all the metrics, because you don't know at the beginning which is going to be the most valuable. Now, instead, I'm going to play with the open courtship, which means right. instead of waiting until we get to round four to find out what the target is, we're going to find out right now what our first target is. It's prestige. Servants discover that the Fairchild twins relish prestigious living. Alrighty, so these first few rounds are going to be a race for uh, trying to build up our prestige. And because whoever has the most will get big benefits that will help them um, from here to here until the next courtship happens. So we'll see how that works out. It's a race for prestige. And it's because we're playing with the open courtship that Jen starts with an extra 100 because I have a first player advantage. If you're playing closed courtship, we won't know until here. And uh, there's no extra money to start because there's no implicit benefit to going first. Anyway. So anyway, we are all about the prestige, yo, trying to impress those Fairchild kids. I've got my own goals. I want to find some American heiresses. I want to get this flower room built. Although, man, 700 pounds, that's crazy expensive. So that's my situation. Let's start. And there's a little nice summary of how the game play. First of all, we rotate service, then we host an activity, invite guests, provide service, enjoy favors, and then clear the board. That's how a standard turn goes. Although instead of doing all that stuff, you can have a turn where you simply pass and um, don't do any of it, which you might see. Uh, sometimes you have to pass because you're just short on cash or you don't have enough gentry in your deck and you need to recall all your cards, etc., etc. So anyway, I'm not going to pass right from the get-go, so let's start out by rotating service. That means if any of my servants were exhausted, they would go from expended to servants quarters where they rest up. If any of them were resting, they would go back to active service, ready to go. Now at the beginning of the game, they're all ready to go, so we skip the rotate service. Now I'm going to host an activity. And that means I look at the five options I've got. I can... Um, do uh, you know, I've got a bowling green, so we can have a bowling event, which uh, means I invent, invite two gentry to this event, and we'll make 300 pounds out of it. Or I can, and that's a sporting event. I can have a prestige event in my parlor. We can play whist, which is only for the ladies. Two ladies will uh, come, and that will increase our reputation by one, two, three, which will put me over the top. One, two, three will take me to level two on my overall prestige. So that's kind of nice. All right, if we um, want to use our gazebo for afternoon tea, that is an estate event, and it requires any two gentry and gives um, two. Uh, this lets us invite a prestigious guest. There are two types of additional guests. Remember I said I've got two guests right from the get-go, uh, Sarah Lewis here and Esquire Reginald. There are casual guests and prestige guests. Uh, which are, you know, one fleur de or two fleur de -lis. So having afternoon tea lets me get a prestige guest. And those, they can be very, very important, powerful people that can get us a lot of benefits if we impress them. So that's what afternoon tea would get me. Or instead of putting on these events, I could run the butler's room. I could have a service event, which means I could hire more uh you know, more servants to, you know, supplement the staff I've already got. And finally, if I want to, I can go to my study for the first event I do and do village uh, fair planning. Two of my family members would have to be involved with this. And um, our benefit would be, whenever we do any of these, we flip them over. If I do the gazebo for afternoon tea, right now, if I never use my gazebo over the entire game, I'm going to lose two points at the end of the game for an unused gazebo. But as soon as I use it for afternoon tea, I will not only get this benefit of a, uh, a very prestigious guest, but I'll flip it. And hey, I've gone from negative two to two victory points. And I can still um, do afternoon tea, but from now on when I do afternoon tea, I get a casual guest, but I draw two and take one, so I have more control over who I'm getting. And that could be good for me, because if I'm looking for American heiresses, subsequent, you know, doing afternoon teas over and over again, drawing two and taking one could help out. 
The uh, study is an interesting one because if I never use the study, if we never engage in village fair planning, at the end of the game, we'll score three points um, because we focus more on our own family activities instead of you know, the, the local commoners or what have you. But if I do this and flip this, well, I won't get those three points. I'll get no points because we're spending too much time helping the locals instead of improving the other rich folks. But I'll get a permanent benefit, which is during every village fair, I'll make... 300 pounds and two prestige. And there are one, two, two village fairs. If we play the extended version, there are actually three village fairs, making this even more valuable. So this is an interesting choice. If right off the bat, the first um, activity I do is village fair planning, I'll lose three victory points, but I'll gain 600 pounds and four prestige over the course of the game. So that's, that's not bad. Uh, particularly because, remember, I want to make enough money to be able to buy this flower room as soon as possible. But I've got another consideration. Remember, we're competing for prestige. When we get to round four, whoever has the most prestige, or the most victory points worth of prestige, will get the favor of the Fairchilds. So that means I probably want to do whist in the parlor because that is a prestige activity. And that means, I, instead of having negative two victory points of prestige, I'll have two. And if I can do that and get another prestige-based building and do an event there, then I can pretty much lock this up. Now, there's no prestige buildings out, but some will come out over the course of the game. So that's the big question. Now, I've got a couple of rounds to do this. Do I go for the village fair planning? Do I do? Now, oh, there's another benefit to doing prestige as well. Because of my secret goal to find American heiresses, you know what, because of that, I can, I can do, I got time to do the village fair planning. I can do it next turn if I want. Let's go, let's, um, let's play some whist. So, I have chosen to open up my parlor to host a game of whist. So, I put this over here in my current active event. Alrighty. Now, I have to invite guests. And that's where my hand of cards come in. This is a deck builder of sorts because you've always got all these guests who like to keep coming back. And of course, the family can join in as well. And the bigger, the more cards I get into my hand, the more options I have. Now, here's the thing. Whist has some requirements. Two ladies must attend this. So, I could have la the lady of the house or the, uh, you know, Lady Cavendish and her daughter Lady Tara uh, attend, but I've also got the guest, uh, Lady Sarah Lewis. Now, if I invite her, she'll make 100 pounds for me. And I want to save up money as fast as I can. But here's the thing, if I have Lady Cavendish, the ladies of the house, you know, the, 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 the you know, do you want to call it the matron? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, they have a special power of um, view two casual guests and keep one or dismiss any guest who's hanging around that you don't want to keep around because some guests are bad news. They're cads, they're, um, they're hangers on, etc., etc. So you can get rid of bad guests or you can draw two and keep one. So the thing is, I have to invite two ladies to whist. I will invite Lady Cavendish because that will let me start looking for American heiresses since I don't suffer the penalties that most players would by inviting them to our house. So there's Lady Cavendish and now two ladies. I can have her daughter come, which will let me invite another guest. So between these, I'll end up getting two guests. I'll draw one blind and I'll draw two and keep one. Heck, maybe I'll get lucky and find two. There are a lot of American heiresses in that deck. So I could go that way, but then I'm not really, I, and, I, but I'm not making any cash because I'd get these benefits plus I'd get the, the three prestige or reputation. Yeah, I think it's, I forget if it's called prestige or reputation. So, but I wouldn't be making any cash. So uh, since I'm already, um, you know, drawing two and picking one guest here, I'll put Lady Tara back and invite our guest, Lady Sarah Lewis. All right. So, the rest of my gentry, they stay over here waiting to be used, um, debate, waiting to uh, partake in further activities in a future turn. So, I have invited guests, two ladies. Okay, now I have to provide service. And what that means is my servants have got to step two. Whist requires um, the, uh, oh, what do you call it? The the, the the head housekeeper, the Mrs. Hughes, if you follow... Um, uh, Downton Abbey, which I have to admit, when Jen and I play this game, we constantly refer to the uh, the house, the head housekeeper as Mrs. Hughes, and the butler as Mr. Carlson, and we uh, call the poor footman here. We always call him uh, Mosley's, and we, uh, uh, you know, and this is uh, Bates, you know, your valet, and Anna, of course, sweet, sweet Anna, the uh, lady's maid. So. We need Mrs. Hughes, the, uh, the head housekeeper, to run this. It's a big event, so we put her in. Now, 
That means if a she's unavailable for anything else, if we had a guest that I wanted to invite to this that required the, her services, I, she can't be in two places at once, but this is fine. So that's taken care of. And if I look at the guests, the lady of the house, you know, they've got their own personal staff. They don't need anybody. But uh, Lady Sarah Lewis, she needs a footman. Which is very, very strange that uh, you know that a lady wouldn't want a. Most of the time, when you invite uh, lady guests, they want the uh, the Annas, the ladies' maids. But she actually wants a footman. Footmen are usually used to run the events, like the bowling event or you know the afternoon tea. But in this case, Lady Sarah wants a footman, and. That's a bit odd, but there's a reason. This lady is judgmental and grim. Although wealthy, she travels with her own maid. So she already has her own maid. That's why she wants a footman. Uh, because she's so wealthy, we've got to send some extra stuff. So that's the interesting thing. Since I only have one footman, if I wanted to do a bowling event with her, I couldn't do it. Because the footman would have to be running this and wouldn't be able to service her. So management of your servants, and maybe hiring more servants, depending on what, um, what guests you have available to you, becomes a big part of the game. But anyway. So she's going to take a footman. Very unorthodox, but like I said, that's because she's got her own maid. So I've assigned all the servants. The butler and the valet and the lady's maid will not be doing anything this round, but that means they'll be available for next round. Okay, so we have provided service, and now we enjoy the fruits of our labors or if favors. And over here, we get, I get one, two, three, and hey, I'm at level two. Hooray! Boom. Um, and I make 100 pounds. No doubt due to you know, connections and contacts that Lady Sarah was able to provide the family and all that. And uh, Lady Cavendish, I could either dismiss any guests from my hand if I don't like them, but instead I'm going to draw two and keep one. So show me. Boom! Like I said, there are a lot of uh, American heiresses here. I could um, invite to our house Carol Bender Pendergast, the uh, American heiress who, if she hangs around in our house at the end of the game, she loses us two victory points, but not me. I don't mind. Um, and when I invite her to an event, well, we make 400 pounds, but we lose two prestige. So it's a good thing I just made some. Uh, or instead, I could get Major William Hawes, who increases our prestige by two, but whenever I invite him to something, he needs a valet. Um, right. Oh, and uh, right. So obviously, this is my whole thing. I want to get I, I found her. The other one, if I recall correctly, I think goes to the bottom of the deck. There we go. Or no, no, no. They go to a discard pile. I think that's what it is. Oh, I forgot. I have to look it up. It's either bottom of the deck or discard pile. But anyway, so um, that that was perfect. Now she goes immediately into my hand, so I could invite her to the next event and start making some big cash. Although I'll lose my reputation a little bit, but I won't lose victory points at the end of the game. That's exactly what I want. And I want bring on more American heiresses. We love their nouveau riche money um, over here at the Cavendish house. So I got three rep. I used her and I did that. So I've gotten all my favors. Oh, but there's one other. Um, we have upgraded our parlor. It has now been viewed by polite society and it is now worth two points. And now instead of whist, I can um, do uh, casino. Alrighty. So anyway, so that comes back over here, upgraded. And our, um, we're clearing the board. Our servants are plum tuckered out. Mrs. Hughes and uh, Mosley there, they need a break. All right. So these cards go to my discard pile. I can't invite them to any more events until I eventually pass. On a turn where I basically skip and do nothing, that's when I can recover all my guests to invite them to new events. But it's okay. I mean, I got a new one and I'm pretty happy with that. So that was my first turn. I've gone through the steps. Now it is... Oh, by the way, also I should have said, at any time I want during my turn, I can sacrifice reputation to either... I can sacrifice two reputation to make uh, 100 pounds, and I, I can do that as many times as I want if I'm really desperate to get that flower room. I can sacrifice three reputation to um, automatically force a servant to work. If they're over here, which means I, can't, I still can't get them to work and I really need them to work, I can give up three reputation to work them hard and get them ready. But, you know, polite society does not smile well on mistreatment of our servants. And I could spend four reputation to refresh the builders. If I really want, if somebody else gets that flower room, there is another one in the bag. And if it doesn't come out, I can spend four rep to dump everything that's out and draw a whole bunch of new ones and hopefully find what I'm looking for. But I've already found what I'm looking for. I just need to get the money. Okay. So I want that money. That was it for me. My first turn is over. It is now Jen's first turn. So let's take a look and see what her objectives are. Alrighty. She has a servant bonus of 
she will get five victory points at the end of the game if she hires an under butler. Now, in a two player game, there is only one under butler you can actually hire in the game. And so, Jen's got to decide. Is she going to hire Thomas? Because remember, one of the activities she can do. Now, you know, we're fighting to have the most prestige. Jen doesn't want to fall behind on that. So she should do Whist as well to get her uh, prestige up. But, you know, there's only one under Butler. If she doesn't hire him, I might hire him. Probably I won't. But is Jen willing to take that gamble? <sighs> Because she could, um, she could just do um, the butler's room and hire somebody right now, and that would be her whole turn. It's just the head butler, Mr. Carson, basically does this, and you get to hire. You either get to hire somebody or steal somebody from your opponents. Although, you can never steal the, um, the, the, the butler, the housekeeper, or the underbutler. You can only steal valets, ladies' maids, and footmen. Although, generally, you don't have to do that if there's ones over there to hire. But anyway, so, I mean, it's, it's hire two or steal one. Jen is not worried about that. She can pick him up later. She's pretty confident that I have no reason that I would spend a whole turn right now at the beginning of the game hanging around a butler. So she's not going to worry about him right now. She'll get him later. Although, he's a very powerful servant. He's a wild card. He can stand in for any male role. He can stand in as the butler or a valet or a footman. He, you know, he's a jack of all trades. But that's useful later when you're having really big events back to back and you need to have a big staff. Jen's not going to worry about that right now. Her other bonus she's chasing after is having a full house. At the end of the game, she gets one victory point for every two guests that are in her deck. So she wants a big fat deck at the end of the game. But she also doesn't want to have, you know, bad cads. So what is she going to do? Is she going to do, do like I did? Um, you know, go for the prestige. She can still do that in the next round. I think, you know what? J uh, the Yorks, they are a family of the people. Jen is going to have her first event be uh, going to the study to do village fair planning. All right. And so, uh, Mr. Carson needs to be involved with that and two family members. So, actually, I actually didn't even look at Jen's. All right. So, Jen's got basically, you know, different family members, but they have the exact same abilities. All the starting family members have the same abilities. One of the families has a, uh, oh, what do you call it, uh, an extra, a fifth family member. Each of the four families has a unique thing. The uh, Mine is that I start with more reputation. Jen's is she has an extra footman because the York family service staff is legendary. Begin the game with an extra footman on the service staff. One family has an extra family member, and then the other family, I think, is the richest. They actually start with some money. So anyway, so Jen's got the same ones. Her special uh, guests, two ladies, both of whom need ladies' maid. So she, well, no, first of all, she's doing an event where she can't bring the guests. Only only the family can do the village fair planning. So these guests won't be used. They both need ladies' maids. This one makes 100 bucks. This one um, allows you to invite another casual guest. But you just draw a blind and hope for the best. That's uh, Miss Barstow, who has little means and no reputation, but she has pleasant company. So of course, she's always bringing other people along with her. Lady Anne is always generous, and despite humble be uh, heritage, she is a beloved guest. All righty. She's always generous, i.e., we want that money. OK, but anyway. Since I am doing the village fair planning, which means we are giving, Jen is giving up three victory points at the end of the game. It's two family members. So um, the, uh, the young Honorable Alan York, the young son of the family, could either increase Jen's reputation by one or make 100 if he is involved. The Earl of York just makes 200. It just straight up makes 200. The lady of the house, we already saw that, uh, draw two and invite one or dismiss bad ones. And the young lady of the house, Lady Marianne, their special effect is they get to invite one guest. And again, it's drawn blind, you know, exactly like how those other lady guests are. But she also has an admirer bonus. If any male prestige guests, i.e. the high level guests, accompany her on an event, the family reputation increases by two. So she's got a special role to play as well. So two family members. You know what? I think Jen, Jen wants to get some cash. So she's just going to have the men of the family. Although, no, no, no. Jen's whole thing is she wants to get more guests. So it makes sense for her to send the ladies of the house to do this. She won't make any money, but she will end up getting two more guests added because she wants to have a full house. So I guess she'll go that way. She'll save money for a later day. So uh, the rest of, you know, her, de her, her gentry deck stays unused. And let's see here. So, Jen has chosen the event, 
and she's invited two family members. She has provided all the service staff because family don't. I mean, family have implicit staff. Um, you know, these are the extra staff that serve all our guests. And the butler is ready to go, so Jen is ready to reap the rewards. She gets to invite one guest. Um, she'll just draw and let's see who she gets. It's um, oh my gosh! It's a gossip. It's uh, Miss Trudy Oliver. Negative four points at the end of the game, but. Uh, she seems to be kind and humble, but she is a master of behind-the-scenes gossip. So, this is a terrible guest. I, except not really. This is negative four points at the end of the game for Jen, if Jen doesn't get rid of her. But, if Jen uses her in several events, but eventually uses the power of the Lady of the House to dismiss her, in the meantime, she's an attack because negative two reputation to any family you want. So Jen could have this gossip in her house send, um, you know, push me back down on my reputation. Ooh. All right. So anyway. So uh, that's who Jen drew blind, and so that goes directly into her hand, and the lady draws two and picks one. Alrighty, so we've got uh, Thomas Macmillan and Miss Carol uh, Harpstead. Thomas just makes 200 bucks. Uh, Miss Carol, oh my gosh, no, she's a popper, which means she's negative one point if you don't get rid of her before the end of the game. A spinster, she's led a tragic life, uh, it's left her impoverished, but she is well respected for her lively mind. So. If we invite her to events, we lose a hundred bucks. Jen loses hundred bucks, but she every time you invite her, she automatically invites somebody else. So she just generates more people. And remember, Jen wants a lot of people. But does she want to pay an extra hundred pounds to get those hundred people all the time? Or does she get the debonair Scotsman um, who just brings in two hundred? I think Jen will go for that. All right, she already got one loser she'll have to dismiss. I mean, she would eventually want to, although again, she could take this, spend the extra hundred whenever she uses her, and just before the game is over, dismiss her to not lose the negative one, but she would have gotten a lot more guests over the course of the game. But another thing she's got to worry about is the makeup of men and women, because some events um, are um, you know, unisex, men or women could go, some events only um, ladies can go, some events only men can go. So that's a tough choice. This is just a guaranteed moneymaker. This is really pushes Jen's event. But she needs money to be able to even use uh, Miss Harpstead's special ability of bringing more people. I think Jen, she'll go for the money. All right, so this, she goes away. Might regret that later because that was perfect for her. But anyway, so, um, and also, so Carson is exhausted. Her study has now been downgraded because it's been used for commoner planning. But now when Jen gets to this village fair and this village fair, that's 300 pounds. So Jen's just made 600 pounds, but it'll take a while before she gets it. These two are completely exhausted. They're not going to be able to be used for a while. Jen still got her secret goals. And, um, right, that was Jen. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I totally forgot. On my turn and Jen's turn. It doesn't say here, but enjoying the favors is more than just getting the income you know, from the events and the people you invited, that is also your opportunity every round to buy one building. So, last turn, I did have the opportunity to buy one of these, but I only had 100 pounds. As you can see, the cheapest, a footman, or, you know, the still room costs 300. The servant's quarter costs 400 minus one, so this costs 300. The stables cost 500 minus two, so the stables are a discount right now at only 300, but heck, if I could wait till they're all the way down here. So, but anyway. So um, I didn't have the money because I, I didn't make any money. Instead, I focused on other things. So I'm not, I didn't buy anything. Jen has 100. She's also not buying stuff. So um, we are not taking advantage of that. Right. Is there anything else I am forgetting? Righty. Um, yeah. No, I think that's it. That's basically it. Yes. Um, that we can buy stuff. OK. So it's on to round two. And I am still the first player. I am now a much, uh, a, a, a much more worldly family because you will notice I have two prestige now. Now that's fine. All of these buildings only require one prestige to put on these events. But 
If I wanted to have br breaking fast in the breakfast room, that requires at least two prestige. Same for admiring the blooms in the flower room. I have to have two prestige to do that. Now, I've worked my way up to get two prestige, so I'll be able to use this flower room. But if I get this conservatory, I would not be able to use it because i got to level up more to where I have three prestige to be able to invite three ladies, thereby activating all of their special abilities and increasing my prestige, all of it, for the cost of a single um, Mr. Carson, a single butler, head butler. All right. So anyway, so I'm on to my second round. And now, if I do not do the village fair planning this round, then, um, yeah, th then I... Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm throwing away 300, but I'm throwing away three victory points. And three victory points is, is, not, is, is not nothing. I mean, that could make or break me. Um, now, the problem is, if there were another prestige building out here, I would probably just go for that. Now, what I could do if I wanted, I could refresh. I could lose four, of my, four steps on my prestige, which would put me back down to level one, so that I could refresh these, put out um, six completely new ones, and fingers crossed, find a prestige. Then, I would try to do a high money-making event, like, say, bowling, to get enough money to be able to buy that prestige room, but you know what? Oh, but that would be the problem. The prestige room would probably come in at negative points, uh, which, hmm. So here's the deal. If Jen goes for Wist as well, although can Jen? Jen just used two of her ladies. I have no idea if she's got lady guests. For all I know, maybe she can't do Wist, in which case I've got the prestige in the bag. Hmm. What to do? What to do? So do I go for the village fire planning? Um... Or do I ignore that, throw the money away, but remember, I do want money. But hey, uh, what was my new guest I got? All right, all right, so these two, they're exhausted. They're not going to be partaking. But the guests I've got on hand now, I can make 400 pounds. You know, I can invite her to a couple of events, and who cares about family planning? Yes, I'll be dropping prestige, but I've got a huge money maker here. And so that means I can make money without having to throw this 300 away. So I think because I've got um, Carol here, I'm not going to bother with family planning. Instead, I mean, heck, if I could do an event that required three people, I could make 700 right there, which would let me buy my flower room and just get that done. Um, although I would lose two prestige, which means I wouldn't be famous enough to actually use it. So I'd have that problem as well. Hmm, what to do? So many options. Well, if you want to find out what I'm going to do, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen to go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.